Hey guys, it's Max. We just got in the brand new 2020 iMac 5K that we've been waiting for a long time. And before we open it, I almost forgot, I still have my mask on. This thing is super comfortable, way more comfortable than my other masks, no exaggeration. So if you guys wanna stay safe and support Maxic at the same time, go and check it out along with our other merch down below in the merch shelf. Let's go ahead and get this thing opened up. Now in this video, we're not only gonna take a look at the thermal performance and fan noise and compare it to the previous model, but we're also gonna compare the performance to a version that costs $850 more last year and miss some of the features. Now before we do that, let me show you how easy it is to upgrade the RAM. That's the first thing I wanna do because I saved $760 ordering 64 gigs of RAM myself instead of buying it from Apple. It only cost me 240 bucks instead of a thousand. That is absolutely crazy. Don't let Apple rip you off. Now I'll just line up the RAM like that. Pop one in, the next one, the third one, and then the last one. There we go. That was how easy it is to upgrade. Took me just a minute. No, it doesn't void your warranty. You can save up to $2,100 for 128 gigabytes of RAM. We have links down below and we have links to our three minute RAM install guide if you want more details. And as you guys could see, so we have 64 gigs of RAM running at the correct speed. Everything is working properly. Now the iMac that we have here is the eight core model that is standard for the 2300 spec with the 5500 XT and all in with the RAM, we're looking at about $2,500 and we're gonna compare it to what it would have cost us last year for a model with eight cores and the better graphics at about 3,500 and then the previous base. So we do have the higher end 10 core coming in with the best graphics card, but Apple's only shipping those end of next week. So make sure you guys are subscribed if you wanna see info on that one and how these two will compare. Let's jump into our tests. We're gonna start off with Geekbench 5. I'm gonna do the CPU test here and we're using Intel Power Gadget to view the frequencies. That just hit 5.1 gigahertz right there. 5.1? Did you guys see that? Now it's at 5.0. So this uh, processor is 8 core, right there 5.1 again. I don't know why. <laughs> the limit's 5.0. It says it's supposed to go to 5.0. It's doing single core tasks right now. It's supposed to go up to five gigahertz, just like last year, if you spent the extra 400 bucks to get an eight core processor. Now it is standard instead of being a six core. So it does hit the advertised frequency. Intel Power Gadget is showing actually 5.1 for some reason, that's weird. That's a positive. And now this eight core that's included, it the base clock is actually 3.8 gigahertz compared to the previous ones 3.6, so that is also interesting. Along with that, last year, if you paid $400 for the A-Core upgrade, the highest we saw that hit was 4.8 gigahertz, not 5.0, or in this case, 5.1. And then as far as wattage, we just hit 129, now 117. This is the multi-core test starting. Um, 129 watts, so it is actually peaking higher than last year. I think, was it 117 last year? 115. 115 was the highest it went last year, so it has access to a little bit more power if it needs it. And here's our results. The single core is a little bit faster than the best processor last year, which actually was the best single core performing Mac out of all of the Macs. And as far as the multi-core, we're just over 7% faster this year. And this eight core is included compared to paying $400 more for the i9 eight core last year. So that's definitely a good improvement. We'll still have to see how good the 10 core does and we'll test it out as soon as we get it. And as far as graphics goes, I ran the metal test in Geekbench 5 and we got a result of 42,000, which is about the same as the previous 580X, which came on this specification. They both have eight gigabytes of video memory. This memory is a little bit faster. Now you have to keep in mind, that this doesn't tell the whole story. We are gonna have a review with a lot of real world tests because there's certain things that have been greatly upgraded, such as the video encoders. They are three to four times faster in this new Navi graphics chip, H.265 decoding. There's a lot that is going on there because the 580X, uh, that architecture is from 2016. So that's much, much older. Of course, if you want a lot more raw graphics performance, you can spend the extra on the 5700 XT, which we recommend for a lot of people. It's a lot more powerful. Now let's take a look at gaming performance. So I'm testing using Unigen Heaven and I'm using the Extreme preset. And so far it looks to be running fairly well. And our temperatures for the graphics, it's at 66 degrees Celsius, fairly cool, but we'll see what we get at the end of the test. So it looks like we have a score of 64.2 frames per second. 
Our graphics chip stayed at about 82, 83 degrees Celsius and the fans stayed at their lowest speeds of basically 1200 RPM, we got 1198. That is about 40% faster than that 580X that was the base spec previously. So even though in the metal test, it was very similar, like I said, there's a lot of architecture updates and 40% faster for gaming. And not only that, but it's just four frames per second shy than the Vega 48, which cost $450 to upgrade to. So right there, uh, for gaming and for CPU, our CPU is faster, gaming performance is almost as fast while saving $850. And now let's push this iMac to its limits with Cinebench R20. We're gonna max out all eight of those cores, take a look at our fan speeds, our temperatures, our frequencies, all of that stuff. Let's go ahead and hit run. I'm gonna watch the how much wattage it ends, uh, ends up using here. So bam, we got a nice spike, 153. What? Oh, geez. Okay. Well, that's going to cause it to heat up quickly, but it's still doing okay. 156. Okay. <laughs> I guess Apple's being a lot less conservative. Last time, the highest it spiked was 120. And it's still staying at 159 there. Temps are going up. Frequencies at 4.7 this whole time. That's under eight cores of load. So I don't know if they've just done a lot of optimizations or what. 98 degrees right here, the fans are spitting up, but it's Apple's pushing this thing hard. We're almost done here. I'm gonna run this test again because I wanted this thing to heat up. 4846 was our score the first time. Let's run that sucker again. So we're almost done with the second run here. It's running at 4.4 gigahertz. And the first run was 20% faster than last year's i9. So we went down 46, 98, went down a little bit more. Let's keep pushing this thing. So it looks like it's running consistently at about 4.4 gigahertz. Instead of last year, it ran at about 3.7 to 3.8. So the frequency is staying much higher. And 4670 we got on the third run. It is running a little bit hotter, a little bit louder because they're pushing it harder, but the performance difference is definitely noticeable. And this year, the eight core standard, you don't have to pay an extra $400 for that one. And then of course, comparing this to the previous six core, that's a massive difference in performance. So what did we learn in our thermal and benchmark video? Well, as far as the actual CPU performance, I'm really pleasantly surprised. And not only is this actual new eight core, which is standard, about 20% faster, slightly higher than 20% than the i9 that you had to pay $400 for. Comparing the base spec, it used to come with a six core for the same price, that is almost twice as fast as far as the CPU performance. And as far as the graphics, we have much, much newer graphics. Finally, an update to the ones that they stuck with for a long time. And for a gaming performance, that had a 40% improvement. And along with that, the fans stayed totally silent when we're doing a gaming test. So overall, for the same money, you're getting a killer deal. And now, for most people, you can save probably about $1,000 compared to last year and get similar or even better performance. So that's definitely a win in our book. Now we are gonna compare this $2,300 model to the one that's a 10 core with the 5700 XT, and then do our full review as well with real world tests, along with video editing, photo editing, and things like that. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Once again, you guys can check out our merch down in the merch shelf below. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.